we started uh, working with them in September, doing a creative play class. And then just one day, we were doing a few yoga poses and one of the, one of the poses was cat. And one of, the, one of the members just said, oh, my cat died. And another one of the guys said, well, my granddad died, but my mom said they're in a better place now. And, and we kind of thought about it a little bit that maybe there is something we need to focus on here. There may be a misconception that mental health is not an issue for people with Down syndrome, but it is. Emily's teaching them, you know, that it's okay to be sad, to be angry, to feel what you're feeling. I don't really like to direct it head on. So there's a book called The Invisible String. It brought up the topic heaven and we're always connected through a piece of invisible string. Again, there's a game that we play all the time, which is grandma's footsteps. Then that brought up the granny conversation. My granny's still here, my granny's not here. And just that everybody's different and everyone has a different loss. One day I just gave them all a piece of paper and I asked them to draw what they miss. Um, someone drew a horse, someone drew a burger. <laughs> One of the members missed their sibling and I didn't know the context behind it so I asked kind of just a few questions and they're just gone to college. A big part of what we see here in Down Syndrome Tip is where teenagers maybe have an older sibling moving away from home. And that's something that seems to come up quite a lot because they'd love to be moving away from home too and they often can't. So there is a huge loss there when a sibling moves out. He's felt massive loss from that, but I think being able to draw the picture, give it to the sibling and articulate that, he got something out of that. But this is something that is very different and it's very creative and it's very, very popular with the members and especially with the families that are attending at the moment. I'm actually happy today. I You're know. happy today? I, 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 was, I was sad in school. You were sad in school? Yeah. Yeah, I miss, I miss my daddy. You miss your daddy, but where, and where's your daddy? My dad's working. He's working? Yeah. Games. Games. Yeah. And, in, and the games that we play, is there one that you like the best? Yeah. Yeah, yeah which ah, one's that? Ah. Kissing. Chasing. Yeah. And the kids cast the knives. Hmm? All the cast knives. This is why everyone in the class is so nice, isn't it? Yeah. Aren't they? It's kind of meeting her age appropriately and level appropriately so it's it's huge and she it's a positive. You know she loves coming here every every Tuesday for it. That's what's worked the most is that I'm going with them and um, rather than really trying to stick to what I want to do. I'm learning from them as well, I suppose. It's subtle enough that they love coming and they enjoy it without almost realising what they're learning. He finds it very enjoyable and he loves the social side of it, interacting and he's quite non-verbal but he does start to express himself a lot more through the classes here with Emily. Um, and the conversations after it is, is, is huge, coming home in the car. She tells me everything that goes, that they've done. It's great, because normally she doesn't speak and she's very, it's very hard to get anything out of her. So my own daughter, who is, is 10, is part of the programme and she is largely non-verbal. So for her to come in here and to be able to act out her feelings and express herself in that regard, it's unbelievable. It's kind of freedom to express the way they feel and with others and enjoy enjoy it and, and, and they're learning all the time from each other, which is really massive bonus for them. In our children's lives, it, it's the small things that matter and, and they become big, big things for them. 